Thanks for coming out at the very end of JAB. I know that you're all probably brain dead and hungover and whatever. Uh, Hopefully this is going to be more entertaining and visual. Uh, I know some of these some of these presentations can be a lot more text and code and things like that. You don't have to worry. I am not a programmer, uh, so let's get into it. Making Joomla's admin interface awesome. So, brief history. I'm sure all you guys know this. You're all Joomla pros. Uh, Joomla's interface has not really changed over time. Uh, it was the same basically from the Mambo days. Who's, who's from the Mambo days in this room? That's you can tell at developer conference. When I ask that at other presentations, there's usually one or two. So this should look familiar then. This is a game. Which one of these is different? You tell me. <laughs> Mambo admin. Uh, at the time, I think this was originally a release released around 2004, the, I think it was 2.5 point, I don't know if it was 4 or 3. Uh, at the time it was actually pretty revolutionary. It, a, lot of, a lot of CMS interfaces, well they weren't even called really CMSs at the time, but it was all text based. Uh, I was coming from an e-commerce system that ran on Perl, and you can imagine how exciting that was. Uh, so when I saw this, I was like, oh, what are these sexy icons? What is this? I want to learn this system. Alright, how do I make a new page? You know, that was the first question everybody asked. Uh, then soon after that came the fork in Joomla 1.0. And it's understandable that this shouldn't be a new interface, right? We were just forking. We made a, we added a little gloss on the top and changed some colors, updated some icons. And that was about it. Uh, and once again, at the time, uh, this was still a great interface. Through the whole Joomla 1.5 uh, development process, it, it wasn't intended to be a major rewrite, but in the end it was. Uh, but in the end, the interface, they felt like there was no need for a major upgrade. Uh, it was questionable at the time. It was still okay. People liked this. They were excited that now it was green instead of red. Uh, but that was really the only big change, right? Joomla 1.5 has been around for three years, and we all know how fast the project grew. All the extensions that exist now, there's so many thousands more than the Mambo days, uh, and nobody uses Joomla at all how they use Mambo. Uh, nobody uses Joomla the same way. Everybody in this room uses Joomla differently. So people started to feel some growing pains. Uh, I think it's a pretty, pretty easy argument that this isn't very optimal for the, all the different ways that everybody in this room uses Joomla, right? Whatever you're doing, this does not represent how you use Joomla. Joomla 1.6 uh, ended up being a big release that it was not intended to be also, and th the decision was made, even though there were small small fights and people brought it up that, yeah, I think it's time that we upgrade this interface, uh, it wasn't deemed as important for this release. And actually, in my opinion, in some ways we took a step backwards uh, with the latest interface. So this screenshot, I love the screenshot because this was taken at 1024 resolution. And you see what happens with the top menu uh, and how the help wraps under it because we have none logged in back end, one logged in back end front end. I would argue that those two things could be one icon. Um, but that's just one of the many things. Joomla 1.6, at this point, we have 8,000, is it, or 7,000 extensions in the JED? So there's no way that this is a flexible enough interface uh, for all the things that we can do in Joomla 1.6. And so we went from Mambo and Joomla 1.0 when it was revolutionary, and now I would argue that this admin has become a liability. Uh, people have the impression and the perception that our project isn't moving forward as we know it is when you look at the code, right? But when you look at this interface over all these years, everybody else is starting to do things, uh, and we're kind of ignoring it. Consistency is good, but stagnation can be bad. It, it's a visual perception that the project isn't moving forward very much when you log into the admin. I wanted to show Apple. Uh, obviously, I'm a, a Mac fanboy. I, I think Apple does it the best. They, they have the best interface standards. Uh, they don't let designers break the rules and the best practices, and, and they're adamant about it. Sometimes almost to a fault. You know, it makes it hard to get things pushed through the App Store sometimes. But 
Apple does it in a fashion where if you go to your updates, you're always, I'm always excited, I don't know about you guys, uh, I like seeing updates because I know there's going to be new features and there's going to be UI updates with every new release almost of all these apps. With Apple, you feel like a kid at Christmas. Uh, you're excited to open the latest package and see what's going on. And I felt like that originally with the early days of Joomla. Now I'm almost scared to open the package when a new new release comes out with the admin interface because I don't know, you know, what are we going to get this time? Uh, it, are we going to change? Actually, we did change back to blue, which was the original Mambo color. So we've done red, green. I think there are some other things that we can change in the admin except for a couple of colors. So let's look over the fence. Uh, let's see what our neighbors are doing. It's inevitable. Anytime you talk about interfaces and open source, uh, you're going to bring up the other, the other big CMSs. WordPress. People love WordPress because it's simplistic. I would argue that I mean, it's simplistic in the interface because you can't do nearly as much. Arguably now with uh, WordPress 3.0, they have quote unquote CCK kind of things going on and you can do a lot more. But still, people use WordPress for blogging and articles. Um, but over time, look, I mean, basically every release WordPress has, they have a new interface update. And sometimes it's a massive interface update. And that's this, this is where they are right now. This is the current one. Uh, and like I said, it's, I'm not as impressed with it as I was originally because I know that they're not doing many things. So it's easier to design an interface to do a few things. Drupal is the other one that everybody is going to bring up, and they uh, they have historically had much more criticism for being hard to learn. Uh, their interface was just completely confusing, text based, and it was they didn't have a real admin back end, right? That was that was Drupal six, where it was through the front end of your site, which is good for some things, but when you could do all this stuff that you could do in Drupal, it's hard to find your way around. Drupal seven. They, they formed a whole UX user experience uh, design process and with usability testing and mock-ups and they, they worked with the community. They've realized there was a problem. That's the point and that's a good thing. There, there was a problem with their interface. They had a, a beautifully power, powerful CMS that could do a lot of stuff, but nobody could figure out how the heck to use it. I would argue still they have a long way to go. I think this is a big step in the right direction for them, but I think Joomla already has some better choices and on the outside of the core. We just need to get the core to update. And this is a close up. I like some things they're doing here. I like how they group task. Uh, they, they have a good, a good approach and it's been tested in, and yes, it's easier, but they have a long way to go, like I said. And I do want to be clear that uh, I don't want to totally hate and bash on Joomla 1.6's admin. There's some good stuff going on behind the scenes. Uh, my favorite thing that is in Joomla 1.6 is admin template overrides. So just like in Joomla 1.5, uh, probably everybody in here knows HTML overrides, right? If you don't like the particular HTML output of a component, you can go in and override it on the template level. So with Joomla 1.6, as an admin template developer, I can now do this. Uh, if I don't like the article display, I can totally change it. So for instance, if I want to make an iPhone admin template for Joomla, I can now go in there and make it mobile optimized, and I couldn't do that before. Another big thing I, I love about it is you can assign admin templates to individual users. So there, I mean, that's obvious. That's a good thing, right? You could think of tons of cases where you want some people to have a really stripped down admin, simple. Uh, some people that are colorblind, you might want them to have a different template to be more accessible. But also, what it allows me to do is hook into it. So I already have a plugin that uh, will detect mobile devices, and it'll change admin templates on the fly, depending on if you're on an Android device, iPhone, Blackberry, whatever. So there's definitely good things going on. Uh, there was not a big uh, change at all visually, but behind the scenes, it helps developers. So for the interface, obviously you can do anything under the sun from social networks, e-commerce, forums, whatever, and the back end of Joomla. It can't be this static interface that doesn't change, especially an uh, admin menu that doesn't change. It's got to be fluid. It's got to change. It's be flexible. So I do want to address, at the end of this, I'll talk about how I want to push this back to the core and what we need to do. But let's look at what we can do right now, some solutions that exist today. 
there's two routes. Uh, you can go the evolutionary or revolutionary. Uh, there's, there's extensions and plugins you can install that make the default admin template more advanced, or you can change the entire admin interface, which is more my preferred route. So for the, the sheepish ones in the room, we'll start with we'll start with the easier route, which is less radical. Uh, improvements via extensions. And of course, the most popular for that would be no number. Uh, if you go into extensions directory, there's a whole admin category. And Peter pretty much is on the, the, the front with his recent updates with his latest 15 admin extensions. But there is a whole category for this, right? So and you go to nonumber.nl and you download this component. Uh, it's an extension manager for all of his admin templates. And later on I'll come back to this too because I do think that this should be applied uh, globally for the Joomla community via the back end, right? This is what we need. Uh, it's really cool. It lists the latest versions of everything. You can one-click install, one-click update, uh, and, and just on the fly quickly check out what's going on with all the extensions. When you click install, it goes through this process. Uh, this is, an, is a, a particularly useful one. This is a cache cleaner. So we all know uh, when you log into Joomla to go clean cache, you probably got 10 clicks, I don't know, to get to the cache manager. And uh, it's, it's something that you need to do frequently if you're blogging or changing the content on your site. So it puts up a little module in the top right toolbar. This is a cool one. This is the... Uh, was this the better preview? Yeah. So when you're editing an article, you have the preview button up there, and it would actually no open up a new window with that article on the front end for an actual preview of what it's going to look like, right? This is an oldie but a goodie. Uh, if you were a Joomla 1.0 user, you used to be able to edit an article and at that time add it to a menu instead of having to save it and go over to the menu manager and then add it there. So he yeah, has this in a modal window. I like that one. This is, uh, is this what he won the award for, the, the Advanced Module Manager? I think so, right? Which is well deserved because it's, he has, it's an entire component that changes uh, the default module manager. And you get stuff like modals to, to edit modules and things like that, and all a thousand other parameters. Come on in, guys. How's it going? Picked a good time to come in, obviously. Uh, so, so we went over, for you guys that just walked in, we went over uh, some ways to update the admin portion of Joomla that exist. Uh, I just covered Peter from No Numbers Extensions for, for Joomla 1.5. If you're not familiar with it, you need to check it out. Obviously, you missed the good part. But this is the more adventurous part of the presentation. Uh, and obviously, she's adventurous, right? Not, on, not only is there innuendos going on, but she's dressed like Indiana Jones, right? Yeah. Hi. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> My wife's in the audience. So the, the second route, the first route was evolutionary, right? Small changes to the existing admin interface. Second route, entirely new admin interfaces. I'll start by myself. It's just alphabetical order, right? That's fine. A admin praise. Uh, if you're not familiar, adminpraise.com is my template club. Uh, it's an entire club just for the admin side of Joomla. There's templates and extensions, but we focus on the templates, which is the interface. Just to show you a history of our progress, this was admin praise one. Uh, this was uh, a few years back now, and it was a proof of concept, right? We were running Joomla Praise, a front-end template club, and uh, where's Tobias? Is he in here? Tobias told me, hey, uh, did you know there's an entire template manager on, on the admin side of Joomla? And I said, really? I did not know that. Uh, so this was, it wasn't radical, but it was definitely not the standard, right? Uh, we, we, we had the we moved the left menu over to the accordion, and we, we made it uh, iPhone optimized when you logged in on your iPhone, and we came, gave you several themes, so I'll go over those in a second. But before I do that, I wanted to show this screenshot. This was when I first released Admin Praise 1, uh, and the Joomla community did not understand that you could have an admin template and why you would want to change the Joomla administrator interface. And Steve Burge posted this, are Joomla admin templates worthwhile? 
This was 2008, September 11. So I'm going to come back to that at the end. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that. That was the general attitude. Uh, Brian Tiemann gave me a hard time at first, uh, didn't, wondering why I'd want to change the admin and break all the training manuals that existed out there. And I thought it was worthwhile. I thought that you shouldn't need all those training manuals to understand Joomla. Uh, going back to admin praise one, we had a, cool, a couple of other cool little features like the little component fly out. Uh, once again, it wasn't radical, but it was just proof of concept. Uh, we found out there was a market for it. It became our top selling template, so we said we should do another version. And it was, th these are the other themes for it. So we had like a Microsoft Outlook kind of theme, a Google theme, a Joomla theme, and an Apple theme. The standouts were mainly that it was a proof of concept and that it was iPhone optimized. Admin Praise 2, uh, we said, okay, obviously th this is, uh, there's a target audience for this. And we launched adminpraise.com, a whole separate club and we released Admin Praise 2. Uh, Admin Praise 2, we designed it more like the Adobe experience, if you, like Photoshop and fireworks and things like that. Much more like a web app, right? Uh, where the sidebar could be condensed. Uh, they had a dock menu at the bottom like Mac products. Uh, the, whole, the whole user experience was much more like an application and this is kind of a neat thing. It shows you all the modules you have in a drop down. Uh, we were just kind of testing the waters, right? We knew there was interest. We knew we wanted a different interface. Uh, we didn't know where we were going with it. I just wanted to see how far we could push it. And this one was met with, uh, I'd say, equal criticism and reception. A lot of people were totally confused by it, and a lot of people started living by it. Uh, but I had fun building it, so I, I knew this was the, the direction we wanted to start going. And so I was focusing on admin praise right now. The standouts were that uh, overall there's just much more granular control. Everything you see is either a module or controlled in parameters. And you, could, you can select man, uh, manager, admin, super admin for everything you see on the screen. So it was granular control over the entire admin interface. It was almost too much for some people because they weren't used to that. Nobody's used to having control in the back end of Joomla. The next one was stainless. Uh, this was an admin template that was, on this one I mainly focused on the interactions between uh, you and the interface. If you clicked on it, I wanted it to feel like a button, right? I want it to be like an application. Uh, it had a little form meets function as well. If you see the yellow bar up there, that's the session toolbar. And that session will, will count down as your session runs out in Joomla. So we all know if you're uh, writing an article, you get pissed off if you, if you go click save and you lose everything you've been writing. So there's little small advances like that. This one wasn't a huge step forward, but it was just a visual step forward and just to kind of keep things moving. They have some other cool things, uh, like the, the whole top section, you have the choice for it to be static, uh, as well as the, the bottom toolbar. So if you're, if you're scrolling down a long list of articles or whatever, you have the quick access to all the links at the bottom. So it was, I was just starting to understand these things called uh, interactions uh, and usability and kind of playing around with things. And this is just to show you that with all the configurations you can do in it, it looks entirely different. So standout features were just that it was very customizable and I was really uh, dipping my toes into the interaction design of things. Um, Admin Praise Lite, and this is actually the 1.6 version of Admin Praise Lite, I decided that I wanted to release a totally free uh, admin template and let people take it and do what they want. And I think uh, there's tons of people that use this for their own small distros, right, if they have clients, because it's extremely quick to load. It, I really focused on the speed of things, and it's super, super easy to, uh, to edit the menu structure and change the colors. It's all really simple CSS colors. So a lot of people, actually, this is still their favorite one just because it's really, really easy. Uh, this screenshot I wanted to show, this is one of the cool things that you can do in Joomla 1.6. Uh, since I now can, can override the layout inside, inside the, the center of the page, I can do things like hide all the other information in tabs and let you actually focus on the article when you're editing an article. I don't know how many of you are using 1.6 right now. Uh, but if you go edit an article, it's kind of funny that if you actually have a small monitor, you don't see the text editor. 
you see title, alias, and all these things, and you don't see the article editor at all until you scroll down, which to me, it's a questionable user, user experience, right? You're coming to write an article, you want to be able to see the damn editor. Talking about uh, usability, uh, this I wouldn't say is the best stream for that. This is the ACL built within to the articles in 1.6. I still think there is a lot of work to be done here, and I know people are doing uh, some work here, excellent work on the ACL to try to simplify it. Standout is just that it was free, uh, easy to navigate, and it's fast as heck. And uh, also that this, this gained more attention since I listed it on the JED as free. Suddenly, instead of hundreds of people buying it, we had thousands of people downloading it and testing it and reporting back that they loved it. So I knew at this point, okay, this is, th this is, almost, this is an industry. Admin templates can be an industry. Admin pad uh, is an iPad optimized admin template and it mimics the, the look of a, a native iPad app. It, it isn't an actual app, uh, which sometimes it's hard to explain that in support. I think we've done too, too good of a job making it look and feel like an iPad app. Uh, but it's neat because you can, with a parameter, you can set it to only show for iPad and then switch back to default in the browser. But it's it's just user experience. Uh, it's just a template, right? But it's easy to click things with your thumb and your fingers on the iPad. It's easy to navigate. It's a native experience on the iPad, so you enjoy using the Joomla on the iPad. If anybody else has tried to use Joomla on a tablet or an iPad or anything like that, it's kind of a strange experience with the drop downs and things. And there's some fun themes that we did for it. I wanted to stop and, and bring this up because this always comes up, right? Uh, I see the, a passionate nod right there. You can't use WYSIWYG text editors on the iPad. It's not a Joomla thing. It's not a, S, uh, it's not a JCE thing or a tiny MCE. It's just the way that it interacts with the screen uh, and, and it, the fact that it loads it into iframe. So it's, it's not a problem native to us, but it is a global problem. The only, the only editor I know that works on the web is Google Docs. So we need to see however, however they crack that code and we need to reverse engineer that and bring it to Joomla. This? So we also developed, thank you, <laughs> nice segue. Uh, we developed uh, the simple content editor, which we give away for free on admin praise. And it basically works like a form BB code editor. Uh, it shows you the HTML, which still isn't fun for some people, but it gives you the handy buttons for bold and H1 and bulleted list and things like that. And if anybody in here has ever tried to type HTML code on, on the iPad keyboard, you understand the beauty in this. Uh, it's about 15 clicks to get a bracket, right? Just one bracket. So this, this is really nice. Standout features is just that Joomla is fun to use on the iPad. It's, it's all about user experience. Uh, latest and greatest, and uh, I can give shout outs to actual people in the room that I met for the first time this weekend that have, are working with me. Uh, Alexis and Matthias and Daniel and the, the team at Freaked Out are working with me on Admin Praise 3. So it's no longer uh, a developer, our designer trying to be a developer, or me trying to pull Tobias off of Project Fork development to, to help on Admin Praise. We now have a full team, so I'm absolutely thrilled on where we're going with this. Uh, this one, I really, really wanted to make it feel like a web application and flexible. I want it to be completely custom to everybody the way they use it. So the, the dashboard, I want it to be a true dashboard. I want to throw away all the default modules. I mean, some of them are still useful, right? Like, you might want to see logged in users. But we're developing other modules, such as the activity log that tracks all the, the user activity on your admin side. And a quick item that'll quickly let you add uh, an article to K2 flexi content or the core content. And you see here, we're real, I'm really playing around with the application feel. Uh, it, I'm copying a lot of things that you see in the Mac app world. And it's because those are the best. It's the best usability and the best user experience. I also want to show that we're in, a, we're in a very wide layout here. And so notice that in the next few slides, things change when you get, uh, when you get skinnier. So you see the, the icons on the left and the labels next to them. We have four columns down here. You get a little more narrow, you get three on the bottom, and then the labels go on the bottom of the icons. 
all the way down to this. So th this, this gives us multiple things. You can have Joomla open in a window on the side of all the apps on your computer in a small window kind of keeping, keeping an eye on everything. Uh, it gives built-in native mobile optimization on any device. So it's not just like the iPhone. This will just work on anything at that resolution, basically. So it's not just, we're not singling people out that happen to be using Android users. Are there any Android users in here? All right, all right, all right put your hands down. The enemy. Uh, but no, so it, there's multiple things going on here. We're, that's just one instance uh, of what we're doing. Uh, for all your settings, for, for stuff like your profile or the global config or your site info, we open it in a modal window because, once again, stuff like that shouldn't take five or six clicks to get to, right? This is the latest uh, feature, I guess you would call it. Uh, now we have an entire component for Admin Praise 3, uh, which Daniel's built, and we have a complete admin menu manager in the back end of Joomla. So, it, it, it seems crazy to me with how flexible and how important the front end menu system is to Joomla, right? You couldn't make a site without that menu system. That the back end didn't have one at all with zero flexibility. So you, get, you have a lot of the same features here. You know, you can reorder, uh, you can quickly unpublish things. When you edit a menu item, you can pick manager, admin, super admin. On the top right, you can pick the icon that's going to be shown in that left menu over there. So all the menus you see are totally controlled by this menu system. So it actually gives you full control over everything and customization. So if you're using Joomla as e-commerce, you can, you can change your entire menu structure to represent products, product categories, sales, and things like that. So the, finally, you have the option for Joomla to adapt to the way you use Joomla, right? Did you have a question? Okay. Uh, this is another, the latest thing too, uh, big thanks to Nicholas from Akiba. He let us use his, uh, his updater so we can do live updates on the back of Admin Praise 3. So before it was kind of painful, especially now that we have a component, a template, multiple plugins and modules, now you just have one update button. So now we get to deliver the user experience kind of like Apple apps, right? You get an update, you click update, and then all of a sudden you got all this new magical stuff. You have features, interface changes and things like that. So in my opinion, at this point, you can say it's an industry. Admin templates is an industry. Good or bad, I think I actually have, now, now that I'm deep in it, I have some problems with the way that we're handling this, but I'll get to that. Uh, so I'm a big fan of Joomla Bamboo. Anthony is awesome. I hope one day he can actually jump on a plane and come visit us, whether here or in America somewhere. Um, he's developed Simpla, and then I'll go quickly to Crisp, which was uh, a, a more advanced version of Simpla. And it's a nice, clean admin with uh, lots of nice parameters. Uh, little switches to change things real easily. He's got the left sidebar menu, and just like anything from Joomla Bamboo, it is, it's a zenful experience. It's lightweight and makes you feel at peace or something like that. Uh, but I just like the fact that he did it, right? He, he saw the fun that I was having, he saw the need out there, so he got involved and he did an admin template. Standout features is as is flexible. He's got a, a version check update thing too. Also, uh, he's got a session timer which I like, which alerts you if you're about to log out, uh, and it's just a clean, minimal design. Speaking of minimal, uh, Marco's here, right? Did I see Marco running around? Marco Barbosa. Okay, he's here somewhere. Uh, so Marco developed Minima as a user experience project for 1.6. And all, that got picked up for the Malajo project, and it's the default admin template for Malajo. I like Marco. I think he's extremely talented, and I, I like where he's going with this. Uh, well, I like, I like anything minimal, but this, it's lightweight, but when, if you've actually used Minima, it's free to download. I think it's minimatemplate.com or something. Uh, it's got a lot of nice interactions. When you hover over things, when you click on things, uh, he, he's playing around with MooTools things where you have some nice interactions. Uh, one of the things that actually I use in Admin Praise 3 that he has and that uh, other templates have now is we're putting a lot of these toolbar buttons into an actions dropdown. 
I think one of the biggest problems with Joomla is we go to components and on the top of the, on, on their UI, we see 15 icons that are fighting for dominance, right? And you're really only coming to the page to do one or two things. Let's have a honking big green button right there to create something new, right? Let, let's make it obvious what we're here to do. This is to show you also, he's doing similar things where, you, where when you're editing an article, you have tabs at the top and you're really focusing on the task at hand. Plus, it's lovely to be able to hide this ACL by default, right? When you're editing an article, you don't want to see all the ACL at the bottom of it. it. There's so many users that don't need to see that while they're editing an article. He's got a cool little color picker that, that updates the template while you, while you click on it. And I like this feature as well. Um, as you scroll down, the header up there becomes fixed at the top of the page while you're scrolling. So again, he's focusing on the user experience. He wants it to be usable. He wants things to be easily accessible. And that's really a standout feature. So it's just a modern user experience, which is why I like it. And now I guess it's official that it is an industry because every time anything gets popular, Rocket Theme opens a new division. Uh, and, and I know that Andy, Andy loves the admin user experience. You know, I've talked to him about it and he wanted, he wanted to develop an admin template way back when. So I'm not saying that he stole the idea from me. I'm pretty sure I stole it from him. Uh, but it's a, what you're going to see now is that there's trends forming, right? Across Marco's template, my templates, Andy's template. A more simplistic navigation experience. Uh, he has the actions drop down on this page. Uh, you know, the avatar integration, the logical grouping of tools in the top right, separating that from the rest of your menu on the left. And of course, rocket theme being rocket theme, there's color pickers and 1500 parameters. Uh, but I, I love it. You know, I love the fact that they've acknowledged this. Now, I'll get back to how I think this is also starting to be a problem in, in a second, but it, there, there's lots of options as you see. I like this also. He has an extensions menu that's kind of combined a lot of the extensions into one drop down, but not like we need more crazy drop downs in Joomla, but I do like that he's experimenting, right? We're all going through this ex experimentation phase. So the standout features, oh, another thing I show here is one of the standout features is he has a cool little editor tracking uh, that you see in the bottom right there. So when authors edit an article, you can see that, that history right there when you're editing your article. Uh, he's got component layout overrides, even in 1.5. He, he found a tricky way to do it with, with PHP and somehow override layouts that I, I need to, this is free and open source, so I'll be sharing that back on one, our 1.5 templates. But, uh, and it's just customization you'd expect from Rocket Theme. It's a nice entry. I didn't get a screenshot of this, but Gentla has an admin I think they demoed earlier, and it's, it's really specific to their, their customers, their enterprise customers. They, they don't want it to be like a, a, a wide release, even though it is, you can download it. They're focused on their customers and simplifying the interface. I thought if I was here, I should probably mention Nuku. They seem to be popular around here. Um, so I think Stan is working on, on this interface for the Nuku server. This is the web interface. It's, it's a simplified interface. It's a lot, a lot like uh, a couple of templates I've done and, and the Minima template. We're all kind of starting to share these trends. There's, there's, there's design trends and patterns that we're starting to develop. This should look familiar from everything else I just showed you because it's a much better user experience than the default admin. This is cool too. I haven't downloaded and played with this yet, but they have uh, a native app that they did with Accelerator and Titanium that you can use on Mac or Linux or Windows. That it, it's a it's a combined app, right? Where it's a native app, but then it loads the web stuff with, within the interface. And I think you could take it offline, and you could push up articles when you get back online. All your updates you've been doing. So this is kind of a new thing to to wrap our head around, and I'm excited about this. I really want to get my my hands around this when we get back home. And there's just a larger screenshot of it. Okay. So September 11, 2008, Steve asked this question. Is that March 23rd, 2010? He answered this question. Yes, admin templates are worthwhile. Uh, there's obvious benefits to what we're doing. There's obvious needs. Uh, it's something that's been kind of ignored in the Joomla project. 
this is what I wanted to get back to. Uh, I think I showed you 11 or 12 or 13 admin templates. It's the Joomla solution, right? Uh, a problem arises, there's something not in the core, the developers pick it up, and now we got a little crazy with it. We, there's too many options, we're, we're operating islands, uh, we're, we're repeating each other, there's all these the same things that we're doing. We definitely need to find a way to get together, collaborate, and give it back to the project because the project needs it, the project's suffering. Uh, if we, I think if we ignore, ignore the admin interface for the core of Joomla, that we'll see ourselves going downhill. We're gonna lose that market share for, because obviously Drupal and WordPress and all these other guys are absolutely concerned with the user experience. It's as much or, or is as important or more important than, than the core, the code, right? The code is important, but if nobody wants to use it, then you've kind of failed. So what is the ultimate solution? Uh, I think we're starting to hint to it. I think we have things in mind for admin praise three, uh, but it needs to be contextually aware. It needs to know, the interface needs to know what you're doing with Joomla. Uh, so to do that, there are some changes that need to be done. So whether that's an extra tag in XML for a component so I can know it's e-commerce without having to know TN or virtual mart is e-commerce, so my interface can know that job social is social networking, then the interface can be adjusted to fit the, to suit the needs that you're using your site for. Um, it needs to adapt per usage. Uh, this is a Tobias idea again. Um, we're tracking users with our plugin with the user activity log. We can see where, which areas of the site they're visiting more frequently and which areas they never go to. We can automatically adjust the interface to that. Kind of an AI. Um, we need strict standards. Uh, admin components have virtually no standards and that's why you get this jigsaw puzzle when you install multiple components into Joomla where users have to relearn the interface for every different component that they start to use. Apple is awesome and the user experience is such that my grandparents can use it because they make you strictly abide to the same AI, UI standards and, and user experience. So it's logical when you go from one screen to the other. I'm hoping that uh, for one, Joomla 1.8, I hope that's realistic to really focus on the admin interface. We're at these six month intervals now, so 1.7 is already going to be happening too soon to make that happen. I hope 1.8 is realistic since it's a long term release. It kind of feels like a good fit for that. And once again, the internet here kind of sucks as you guys know, so I wanted to get a nice Lord of the Rings reference for one interface to rule them all. Uh, it doesn't work. Joomla is far too much, there, there's too much, too many things you could do for an interface that doesn't update. So I wanted to reiterate this a little bit. So in Joomla 1.6, if you use your site for blogging, here's your blogging interface. Here's your e-commerce interface. Here's your project manager interface. Here's your social network interface, right? And, and I know we've drinking a lot over this, this past three days, so I'm gonna make it a little more, more simple for you, for some people in the room. Sports car, work chart, compact car, four by four, right? Joomla's UI needs to be smarter. We need it to be ultra flexible because the CMS is ultra flexible. That's why we all love it, right? You can do anything with, the, with this system. The interface should be custom to how you're using it. Again, I wanted to go over this. We need standards. Uh, all you guys in the room that are developing components, sorry, but you are not interface designers. Uh, you need to let, leave that to the people that are interface designers. I guarantee you I'm not gonna develop a component. You don't want that. That's gonna come out really, really bad for everybody, right? I'm not gonna be doing Moo tools or any kind of JavaScript because that's not my thing. Let the interface designers design the interface and keep it standard all across the board. It doesn't need to feel like a different CMS for everything. The, we also need to abstract it. Let's actually, I'd like to, to remove a lot of that from 
all these UI choices, I would like to take it off your hands and give you a selection of possible interface types. If you want it to be a list or a form or things like that, sure, you can use that in your component, but you don't have to do the HTML code. You don't have to figure out what the best markup is for a UL with the LI, with the A, with the span, with the link, whatever. Leave that up to the interface designer. You just build the component. So let's picture Joomla if it were a Mac app. Uh, and I promise I'll stop, I'll stop beating home the, the Apple stuff here, but I, I think they're the best uh, usage and best example of how to make a user experience that's easy and uh, obvious. So let's just say, what if this was your blogging interface for Joomla, right? It looks like a web application or, or just a native app. What if this was your e-commerce? Again, if you look at them, they're similar. You figure out really quickly where things are, but it's a completely different interface to suit your needs. A project manager interface. A social network interface. They're using all the same design patterns, all the same standards. It makes sense when you go from one to the other, but it's totally customized to your needs. What if we can do this with the admin? And I think we can, but we can only do so much from a template level. We have to get component developers to do all these things, abstract uh, standards, everything. Hopefully this is starting to sink in. Uh, I'm an evangelist for this now. I, I, it's my passion and I will pair up with any component developer and tell you the best standards for, for how to develop your interface. Uh, if we don't do this, I think by Joomla 1.8, we're going to have serious problems. So that's what I have to say. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Questions? How do we start? How do we start? Uh, I think that we need to develop these standards together, you know, and then and then not break the rules, uh, not reinvent the wheel with every every component you make, right? I think it, it's all of our responsibilities. Andy. Am I going to have an admin template club? Yeah. Adminpraise.com. This is a template club. Yeah, I have eight admin templates on admin prayers. So, yeah, it's been around for a couple of years. Where have you been, man? <laughs> <laughs> Andy. Yeah, um, I really like this idea. The one thing I think you're missing your ultimate solution, particularly if you're going to be standardizing on everything and giving people the code, huh? is accessibility. I, I mentioned accessibility a few times. Were you late? <laughs> You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Accessibility is huge, and uh, if you guys don't know Andy, she's, she's our, our mother of accessibility at Joomla, and she got the whole, the alternate admin template for 1.6 in there, the accessible template. And because of you, you gave me all the hooks for the per user admin templates. That was very important, so. I'm gonna be calling on you for that, okay? All right. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Having these cool user interfaces is the guideline, and every Apple uh, application uses the guideline. This is open source. Why do you want documentation for anything? No, but it's like for any developer. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, I, I was talking. Uh, I was talking with a couple of people here that have volunteered their time to help me uh, to write some documentation on standards, and that, that of course belongs on .org somewhere. You know that that's that belongs somewhere on property. But I agree, that's a huge part of it. And if we document, you guys have to follow it. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Like Drupal? Uh, there, I think there's advantages to that, but I also think that there's disadvantages. Uh, I do think front-end editing is absolutely pivotal, uh, pivotal for, 
for client work or just simple stuff on the fly. And I do think that there needs to be more flexible front end tools for administrating. But I do think for if you really want a dashboard, uh, like a web application, you, I do like the back end for that, right? So I think once again, Joomla is strong because we have both. And we need to focus on that strength. Anyone else? Yeah, certainly that could be put back in. And, and I believe, uh, to simplify what you said, we're talking about workflow, right? There, and, I, and that's one thing that I kind of neglected in my presentation. We need a better workflow. Uh, I did a series of mock-ups when I was developing Admin Page 3, and one of the, the things I mocked up was the idea of pages. Uh, when you want to create a page, we know, because we're Joomla nerds, that that includes, first you got to create the content, then you got to go create the menu, the menu item, and then put the modules on that. But this, if that was all in one workflow process, then all of a sudden I think that's the easier, that lowers the entry point for people that think that WordPress is easy. All of a sudden now you can do all these things in Joomla on the fly and it makes sense, right? It's the learning curve, yeah, it's the workflow, this is all important. And it's possible in 1.6, but I would, I would want it to be more core moving forward, right? I don't, I don't want to have to keep overriding and going around the system. It needs to be part of the system. All right, thank you. Yeah, that's what I was getting to. Uh, I think it's I think it's starting to be a, a bit of a problem. Something that started out of necessity, uh, just like Gmail, just like we have 15 CCK options now, right? Like something that was born out of necessity, uh, people kind of jump on it, and then they operate in islands and not together. So now we're kind of all separated with all these different options. I would argue that um, we've seen that after you install these templates that training goes down for things, so there's argument that it, that it doesn't make sense if you look at Joomla books, but my argument is that it makes the books obsolete because you don't need a book to learn it anymore. Uh, and also, if, if, if developers are installing it for their clients and their clients are learning it easier or it's easily customized for those clients, they might have never seen any of these other admin templates, right? But they, they love Joomla because of the user experience they have. So it doesn't matter if it's one of 15 admin templates. It's, it's helping them. But yeah, I, I do argue that the segmentation can easily be problematic, right? So I don't think there needs to be like full-on clubs where we release one admin template a month, right? Right. Well, that's why, I mean, these are, these are very opt-in kind of things typically, right? Like, usually it's the more advanced users that's seeking an alternate admin template. And this is a different kind of user. This isn't, you're still going to have your default Joomla admin template, right? And that's going to match the documentation on the site. So I think there does need to be a new default admin template in the core moving forward. It's like WordPress. They update frequently, right? How do they handle that? It's, it's because it gets more and more usable and they update their screenshots. Now, print, print's harder to update, right? But maybe print's dead, I don't know. Right, right, good point, yeah. How do, you, how do you document the front end of Joomla, right, with all the templates we have? Because it's a default. I guess that's the reason to have a default, right? Even if there are multiple installed, there's going to be only one active when you, that's the default. But that default definitely needs to get better. So that's what I'm saying. We're out here experimenting on our own, but we need to collaborate get, and get it back to the core. Yes, sir?
was looking for who the personas that we're targeting for, uh, for Joomla, right? We are all, we, we, everyone here is, is uber geek. Right. right? But yet we're talking about creating as a UIs uh, to manage the back end modules, things like that. We're also talking about uh, uh, you know, a business owner adding articles. So, like, person probably the first step yeah. to get to those rules is, is deciding who the UI is for, right? Who, who's the target persona? Because there's a lot of questions and a lot of disability uh, that goes based on who you're targeting. So right. Maybe I think the, the, the way to look at it is, is to give, you have two different identity UIs one for kind of the, the site integrator, uh, manager, you know, someone who's going to be installing the plugins, the extension, and all that. Sure. Right, right. So he was talking about personas or profiles, whatever you want to call them. Uh, yeah, I think there needs to be standardized ones that we agree upon. Uh, but then, and we can document those on .org. But then also with, with stuff like admin praise, right? Then you could do stuff like let people import and export profiles. So you can you can make a custom setup for a certain type of user. And with Joomla 1.6, you connect that to a user group. But if you need to import export this profile to another site or something like that too. So the whole personas and profiles things, I mean, I think that's huge. I'm not sure who wrote that original documentation, but it's pretty good already. But I think we need to kind of refine it and expand on it. Good point. Yes, sir? Thank you. Uh, I, was, I was just wondering if you did a straw poll now and ask for a show of hands, who would like to see a new core Joomla template? Um, I'm sure we'd have a majority swing throughout the conference for something like some of the things you presented. Uh, but I don't want to hope that gets into the poll. I don't want to hope about it. I'd like to sort of know what the process is for having an improvement like that in the core. You'd like to see a process to get something in the core? Like I would too. Uh, no, I, I've been in... I don't want to create a very fun fight, but it's, I, I went to a client pitch a little while back, and my thing was to go and demonstrate, you know, do a demo of Joomla in sure. the client pitch, and the target, the editor, uh, who's going to be using them, this product to make their website. And we got to, the pitch is going fine, you know, doing the front end demo, this is how you edit stuff, so we slip into the back end, and her face just goes, you know, and that's it, pitch over. Right. Yeah, I've had some great conversations, and I, I didn't go over my background completely earlier. Uh, so I do run admin praise, and uh, I, with Tobias, I run Project Fork, and I also have Tap Theme, which is mobile themes. But recently, I've uh, I've been hired full time with eBay, so uh, I'm doing interface design and and usability engineering for them now. And one of the things I'm excited about is part of the job is contributing stuff back to the core. And with guys like Lewis on our team, uh, I have more direct routes to. to get things back to the core, hopefully. Uh, that's going to be my pet project. I, I'm hoping, like I say, if I can make it happen for 1.8. Paul uh, just said that you know, the first issue of the magazine is going to have an open call. People may have questions about the front end of the existing channels to re go for it, and apparently they're going to try according to the DLT, so that might be a place to start. Awesome. OK. So make sure to watch the Joomla magazine. We're all late, just so you guys yeah. If, if you don't, if you don't already, uh, the Joomla magazine is awesome. Uh, it, every, I think it's one of the hardest working teams in Joomla. They have the most fun together. It's the most collaborative, and every month they come out with these awesome articles. So, magazine.joomla.org. Any other questions, comments?
and, and maybe a dashboard, I guess. Like, dashboard edit dashboard. list, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so three. Right. But it's like, and as you were, uh, you were clicking through those, I noticed uh, you pulled up kind of uh, some of the more Apple Finder style uh, interfaces. I, I'm just wondering if, as a part of, I, I mean, I think it was without saying the one who had a template in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I think also thinking beyond that, what we need to start thinking about is <coughs> adding more types of screens to the back end. Sure. So that I can yeah. just pull up one of those and not and leave it to the admin themers to uh, do the markup. To Definitely. Uh, like I said, the reason that people started doing all these alternate uh, component interfaces was because there wasn't the, the things they needed, the tools they needed, right? We need to get all that in the core. We need, we need to, it needs to be all designed and so you have your strict standards and your documentation for all of it and you guys just pick which, which view you want, right? And which, if you want a sidebar for, for your admin component or whatever, right? We need to have all these things. We need to add probably 10 different views compared to what they have now. Yeah, I agree. So that's why it's all around effort, right? Like, we got to get it in there, but then you guys stick to it, and then everything's great. Yeah. I have only one question. Where do I sign up? <laughs> Where do I sign up? 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 Yeah, no, I think that we're, we're figuring that out. You know, I, I hope that through the magazine and once we get uh, buy-in by the core team, by the PLT, then we can, I don't know, hopefully I can help organize some kind of team or something. I, I have lots of ideas, I just don't know what's realistic, so we'll have to see. But I, I'll, I'll, I have your email and your Skype. I'll, I'll let you know. Sure. Uh, the thing I ran into is that I need extra elements, and that causes problems with third party admin templates because they don't expect those new elements. One of the examples is the, the color picker. Uh -huh. I have different templates and different extensions using their own custom made color picker. Um, yeah, no, it needs, it needs to be standardized, right? Uh, they have all, even if it's the same thing, people did, do it their own way and there's no standard. And then it's everybody from uh, component developers to all the guys now, like, uh, like Gantry, right? All these people with these frameworks. I personally have problems with everyone with my admin templates and designing for each one of these frameworks because they override things specific to Kepri to the admin template too. So like people are so used to going around and overriding and things like that and adding their own things. So that's what that's what I'm talking about. If it's standardized, if it's all there, then that's alleviated, right? Yeah, but how would you go about that if there's no standard if, if the, the element doesn't exist yet? Like in, in the well there needs to be a, there needs to be a process, right, to to add new elements. I mean the the admin interface and the whole back end needs to evolve just as the core code evolves, right? When, it, when a stable release comes, you don't, you're not supposed to stop with the, the admin development, right? So it needs to be an iterative process, shorter releases with if there's a new thing that needs to get in a new element. Do you think it makes sense to start some of the Yeah. So Parth was talking about, uh, does it make sense to actually start documenting this stuff now? I mean, we can, right? We can, we can go on the wiki, and I, I believe it's pretty easy to start adding things. I mean, they, they want documentation. Everybody wants documentation. Standards is just more documentation, right? <laughs> I'll, I think a lot of that's going to fall on me in, in starting this process, but hopefully we can get a team together, you know, th that will do this documentation. And everybody you mentioned, uh, Chris Ralt, right? He wants he wants to he wants better standards for the admin, so I know he'll help. So, anyone else? All right, class is out.